Anyone else? She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction <clears throat> is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the rewards she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. As we begin our service, <clears throat> number one, giving the praise and honor to, in my opinion, is the most amazing woman that God created and that was Mary to be the mother of his son Jesus. So we give her thanks for that because we would not be here. Um, and as we celebrate our moms today, may we celebrate them in love and honor and give your mom a hug if she is still with you. And we bless those who have gone on and have received their rewards in heaven now, and they are having the best Mother's Day ever. So let us stand and sing our opening hymn, which is Shout to the Lord, and please shout to the Lord today, make a joyful noise. <clears throat> Again, welcome today. It is so good to see um, you out, and we're thankful that you chose today to, to come um, and be a part of our service. Um, happy Mother's Day to all of you moms, and um, as well as men who may have had to tack upon the role of being mom. Um, we thank you. This is not um, an easy job. It's a never-ending job. Um, but thank you, ladies, for who you are and um, all that you do for um, your families, for your friends, and most importantly, what you do for God, because we are called by God to be a servant, and um, that's what we do. Um, it is so good to see some of you moms and daughters are twinning today, um, and you look so, so good. So, um, hint Father's Day. Let's see you men and sons, see if you outdo the women today and, and the daughters. So again, we just thank you for, for being here. Um, I guess I should have said first, for those who don't know me, I'm Esther Canada and I serve as, I um, have the honor and privilege of serving as a deacon here at Samaria. And we're again, so glad to have you. And for those who are viewing on um, Facebook Live, we thank you for tuning us in today and we hope you receive a blessing. For those who may be viewing later on YouTube, we thank you as well. For those who are in the parking lot, we thank you for faithfully coming every Sunday and joining us. And we hope one day you will come inside the doors. But thank you all for being here. At this time, um, we are going to um, have a special song and a video. And following that, we will um, have another video um, brought on by our AV team.
While we're getting ready um, for the next video, we'll go into children's church. So Miss Laura and all you kitties, come on down. I'm gonna ask y'all questions, okay? And Cheyenne, since you asked first, you can help me hold the plant when it's ready, okay? All right. Do you wanna sit? We got some feet. You wanna sit back here? Y'all can push Mr. David and Pastor Jay out the way. Y'all look so so beautiful. Where do you want to sit? You don't know? Okay. All right. How are y'all doing today? Good. Y'all look nice. Y'all having a good day so far? Yeah. Y'all listening? Yeah. Okay. All right, so I wanted to share something little with y'all. So last week, Miss Wilma said something that I just thought was so incredible. Who knows Miss Wilma? Y'all know Miss Wilma? We know Miss Wilma. I don't know, is she here this morning? No? Okay. All right, she said that when she plants a garden, she does it by seeds. And after she's done planting the garden, she prays over it. She thanks God for the opportunity to plant the garden. And then she asks God to do the work and to grow the seeds into all of the produce and flowers that she needs. So I thought that was so great. So we're going to talk about that. So Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 7, it says, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you are taught and you, are, you will overflow with thankfulness. All right, Cheyenne, can you come up here real quick? All right, hold on. It's kind of heavy. Is that okay? All right. All right, what, what's this? London? A plant? What's, what's a what? Oh, that's how it's supposed to be. It's not. It's all right. Thank you. All right. So how does a seed, I mean, mm, I just gave it away. All right. Forget I said that. How does a plant normally, Darren, don't talk. How does it normally start? London, a seed, right. So before this grew up, it became, it was a seed. And then how did it grow? What made it grow? Water, sun, Chloe, dirt, dirt helps, yep. Thank you. All right, and so do y'all know that we have spiritual seeds planted in us? That's a new concept to think about. Did y'all know that? If y'all, if I asked you, what do y'all think spiritual seeds are? What are some things you think that that might be? Love, caring, joy, faith. Anybody over there have an idea what spiritual seeds? London, safety, Cheyenne, love. <laughs> you ate a seed? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Grace, okay, y'all are, and so do you think, yes, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you, Easton, hope, that's good, those are great things, a lot of those are fruits of the spirit, and all right, one more, yeah, I'm about to share one, I'm going to share a couple, so reading our Bibles, praying, reading scripture, those things help plant spiritual seeds in us to um, grow our faith. 
Now, I know our moms and our grandmas and our aunts and our uncles and dads and Sunday school teachers, so many people help plant those seeds in our lives. And I know my mom planted a ton of spiritual seeds in my life. She helped teach me how to read the Bible, how to pray, how to um, use scripture when I was going through different things, and how to really focus my faith in God. And so I know the seeds that she planted help build up strong faith within me. And so that's what we all want to do for y'all. And I know our parents pray for y'all and your grandparents, aunts and uncles each day that everything that you learn in church and what they do with y'all, that y'all will help grow and be strong in God. Poor thing. Daddy's on the way. All right, so... So when our parents tell us to do different things, like, well, let's pray about it, let's be kind, sometimes that can annoy us, right, when we don't want to, but we just have to remember that those are all good things that they want to teach us that will help us to be really good grown-ups and good kids as we grow up and that to help our faith grow strong, okay? All right, y'all think y'all can remember that? Who's happy for spiritual seeds? Woo! Yeah. All right, does anybody have any prayer requests? Got a prayer or who wants to pray? Okay. Do you have a prayer request? What do you want to pray about? Reggie? Yes, we are going to lift Mr. Reggie up in prayer today. Yes. Milan? Miss Robin? Do you want to pray? All right, if you want to pray, come line up. Lily, we got to pray for Lily. Lily's still not feeling well. Ruth, anyone else? All right, if anybody wants to come pray, do you want to come pray? Okay, come up here. Does anybody else, you have a prayer request? What's that? Pray for our mothers, yes. Hmm. Yep, our moms. Does anybody else want to pray? Nope. Do you want to pray? All right. Mia, are you ready? Dear Jesus. Wait, come back. I hope you. <laughs> Say, dear Jesus. Amen. All right. That was a silent prayer within our heart. So that's good. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. I hope you're free, Ben. So. Amen. 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 Dear Lord, thank you for this day. I hope that Lily feel feel Lily feels better and Ruth feels better, and I pray that Jesus helps them feel better. Amen. Amen. Dear God, thank you for this time that we have to come together and to worship you. Dear God, I thank you for all the moms here, and I ask that you just be with all the little kids that are sick. I ask that you bring them healing, and I ask that you be with Mr. Reggie and Miss Robin today. Dear God, I ask that you just continue to bless this service and let us learn more about you. Amen. Amen. Yes, yeah, so if y'all can quietly go line up, and we'll go to Children's Church. And also, the nursery is open for those who may need the nursery. If everyone could stay still for a moment, we have a prayer. Someone wants to pray for Miss Robin. Dear Lord, I hope you put a blessing over Miss Robin. I know she's in pain right now. I hope you make her feel better and amen. And just a reminder for all the moms, um, I know Miss Robin isn't here, but June and Miss Robin probably have gotten bags. Please get something on the way out. Is that correct, Reggie? Okay. 
So we'll have Miss June at the end of the service grab her little card and go out to the door and you moms grab a bag. Thank you, ladies. Um, we are now going to have another two videos. We're going to have two videos. <laughs> time again, the time that we celebrate all the wonderful women that helped us be all we can be. I'm talking about moms. So moms and this for the many things she gave me. Hey, 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 hey. hello. What, what you doing? What you doing? I just thought we might do a song for the moms for Mother's Day. Hi, moms. Hi. Hi, mommy. This is for you, mommy. M is for the many things she gave We get it. We get it. M is for the many things she gave us. We get it. That's very cute. That's very cute. Oh, you're pretty quick for a bald guy. Everyone join in. Oh, exactly. I just thought that we'd do a heartwarming message for all the moms out there instead of a campy little song. Oh, means that I owe her all I Okay, owe. okay, okay, okay. You do it your way. I will do it my way. Moms, we owe you so much. Thank you for being she there. She is for tender, sweet caresses. H is for her hands that made a home, you've made a home, you've made a home, home on the range. Okay, stop it. She did make a home on the range. You probably called it like a stove, but we had a range at my house. And she made that home. word home, oh, that means so much. We still long to be in your presence. We still long for you to be proud of us. And yes, we still long to come home. Okay, this isn't working. What? No, no, no. You, you're faking it. I am not. You're forcing the no, tears. No, it's real. No, no, no. This does not work in any way. This works. The song works. This does not work. I just thought we'd speak from the heart. That's what moms <sighs> want. You know what? Mom always liked you best anyway. <laughs> we don't even have to say mom. It's everything you've done to help me. Like that time you helped me find my shoes in first grade and in college. And there was that time also that uh, Tammy Cornball broke up with me. Crazy last name, right? But she was really a sweet girl until she broke up with me. And I was sad, but you made me feel better. You brought in some chocolate chip cookies and some milk and you made, you know what? What can make me feel this way, mother? Talking about my mom, mommy. And R stands for right, and right you always shall be, right in our eyes, right with the values that you instilled in us so sacrificially, and right in how you taught us to love God and love others. And so mothers, today we say to you, Put them all together they spell mother, the word that means the world to me, the word that means the world to mama. When I said I didn't like your meatloaf when I was five It's not my fault, it needed salt But that doesn't really matter Happy Mother's Day Happy Mother's Day Happy Mother's Day 
Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Reg. Before we have our praise song, I just want to um, give anyone an opportunity if you would like to share something about your mom, um, whether she's still here or, or gone on. Um, I just want to give anyone an opportunity to do that. Anyone would like to share? So I'd like to thank God for my mother. Uh, you were talking about planting seeds, and she was a very good gardener uh, and with vegetables and sowing spiritual seeds. Uh, always pleasant memories. She was always singing hymns as she's going about her daily tasks. She was always reading her Bible, studying her Sunday school lesson or whatever. Uh, she was not one to talk about it a whole lot, but she modeled it. And so that put, is what stuck with me. And quite often as a teenager or a early 20s and, you know, going out to parties or whatnot, and, and she's reading her scripture, studying her Sunday school lesson, and she would say, well, you're leaving at the time you should be getting back home. <laughs> and so, you know, those general reminders, she never was harsh, uh, but we knew where she stood. And one of the things I had the privilege of doing um, a few days before she passed and uh, visiting with her, and she wanted scripture read to her. And so from uh, early childhood, I remember her reading scripture, and to her last day, she wanted scripture read to her. So the life that she lived was truly evident of her relationship with Christ. My mother was a character. I mean, if you met her, you didn't forget her. She was, uh, she was really uh, pretty funny all the time. And, uh, but uh, if it hadn't have been for my mom uh, and her prayers for me, I would not be a Christian today. And uh, so I just give thanks to God for that. Well, I was blessed with the wonderful mom, and um, I may not, as a teenager, I may not have thought she was the best mom when, when you did something. Mom was going to, if you did something wrong, she was going to let you know you did something wrong. But if you did something right, she was also going to let you know that. She was a loving, caring, and compassionate woman. Um, if it hadn't been for my mom, I wouldn't be the woman that I am now. And uh, I thank God um, for her. I thank God for the time I had with her. And then when I became a mom, I knew what my mom was talking about. That was one of the, the good things um, that she said and one of the blessings, that many blessings that God um, could give to a woman is becoming a mom, whether you're a biological mom, a foster mom, or a stepmom, motherhood was grand. Um, mom always told me, she said, it comes with a lot of worrying. It comes with um, a lot of um, making hard decisions in parenting. There's no book to parenting. Um, and sometimes, you know, we as moms, um, aren't the favorite when we say no to our children. But um, we do it out of love, and we do it because we know best. And um, so I thank God for allowing me to become a mom, and I thank God for the children that I have. And the other daughters that I have inherited, um, I'm so proud of who the women that they have become today. And um, I just love you all. If we could stand now and sing our song of praise, Surely Goodness and Mercy. Again, I wish you mothers a happy Mother's Day. I hope you enjoy your day. And let us pray before um, our speaker of the hour, Miss Hilda, comes and bring us, brings us our message. 
Dear Lord, we just thank you again for this day. We ask, dear Lord, that um, as you have prepared your servant Hilda um, to bring your message to your congregation here at Samaria, I pray, dear Lord, that um, you have anointed her from the crown of her head to the, the bottom of her feet, dear Lord, and I pray that um, all that she says and, and does will bring honor and glory to you. I pray, dear Lord, that we have open hearts, opening ears, and opening eyes dear, to, to listen um, to what you have prepared for her. Dear Lord, may we hear your voice, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, for her. And again, we ask you continue to be with us for all these things we ask in your precious son, Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Sister Hilda. Should have cleaned my glasses and I didn't think about it, so y'all bear with me. I love you. 
From the moment that I wake Till I lay my head I will see The goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life With every breath that I am made, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so every breath that I am made I will sing of the goodness of God I can't see And I probably can't see now after using it to wipe my nose, so bear with me. <laughs> oh, I have had so many encouragements this, this week. Some have been text messages, some have been phone calls, just people say I'm praying for you and notes in the mail. But this is something that I read, I read this week, and we have such an on-time God, I mean just on time. Lord, today I will be in the spotlight, I've been given an opportunity to, to be in front of a group, and I want to do a good job conveying your message. Be with me, Lord, and I know that I can't accomplish very little without your help. But anything is possible with your guidance. Keep me focused, not on myself, but on the insight that I have to give. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, you're just, you're just an awesome, wonderful God. And I just thank you so much, Lord, for... Lord, there's a song that says, Counting Your Blessings and... He talks about it. He's, he's just run out of numbers, Lord, before he even gets to every blessing, Lord, that he wants to thank you for. And, Lord, and that's how I am. I'm just so thankful to Jesus for just being so good. And, Lord, just call me, Lord. Just, just call me. And, Lord, I just pray that uh, whatever is said is because it's what you want me to do. And all these things I ask in your name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Uh, first of all, I just, I just love music, and I would listen to music all day long if I could. My love for music probably comes from hearing music all the time growing up at home. There was always a piano, an organ, guitar, singing, whistling, record player, eight track, and American band staying on Saturdays. <laughs> I was so upset when my GA meetings got changed to Saturdays. But I love all types of music. And if you have a hard time getting your family up and going, I have an opera CD you can borrow. Just play it loud. <laughs> and it's guaranteed to do the trick. I played it one Saturday morning and doors were slamming shut that morning, but they were up. A few Sundays ago, Martha said how she had a song stuck in her head. 
and I know exactly what she means. The song I sung a few Sundays ago in this one were just songs that just kept playing over and over in my head, and that's why you heard them. And this will probably be the shortest message you've ever heard. So if you want to just start gathering your things now, go stand at the door so you can miss the crowd. But I do hope that you hear something in this message that would be a meaning to you. But first of all, I'd like to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day. And if I were to go around the room and ask, everybody would probably say the same thing. Their mothers are the best, or their mothers were the best. And I know mine was. So at this time, I would like to give Megan the opportunity to talk about how great her mom is. <laughs> no? <laughs> All right, well, I remember that on Children's Day. <laughs> and Mom did not have a favor, Merle. Where is he? Oh, oh, shoot. She did not have a favor. Where is he? Merle, if she did, it was me, and I'll tell you why. Because every time we get together as a family, all I ever hear is how I got away with doing things that they had to do. So I just keep reminding them that I was just a sickly child and just needed special attention. And today's, lu and today's lunch will be no different. We celebrate Mother's Day and Father's Day because we are parents. And when we became parents, it's because we were given a gift to raise. Now you made me forget. <laughs> when we became parents, it's because we were given a gift to raise. And that child does not come with the owner's manual. We have God for that manual. Our children are like sponges. They absorb everything. They repeat what they hear. They imitate what they see. So what characteristics are they learning from us? Our children can be so cute in their words and in their actions. And when they aren't, it's usually in public. <laughs> if we don't have God's goodness in our hearts and in our thoughts and in our words, we can do considerable damage to our children. And this is just not for parents, but for anyone who has a child in their life. Our children are seeing and hearing everything, especially when we think that they aren't. They're learning from our TV shows and the music that we listen to. And if we don't teach our children, the world would do it for us. When I was looking for scripture on God's goodness, I found there's probably over 40 scriptures. So I wrote down the ones that I wanted to read. I can't find my list. I don't know what I've done with it. So I guess I'm off to a good start. The Bible describes God's goodness because of his characters, his character, and his works. Each one of us has experienced God's goodness daily. And each one of us could give a testimony on God's goodness. All we have to do is when we wake up, just look around us. When we use the word God's goodness in a sentence, we're describing him in the highest possible level. When we use the word good, in a sentence, we're speaking about earthly things, like a good meal, a good show, a good friend, or maybe just somebody who was good to us. And all of these things are imperfect and tainted. Our God is none of these things. God's goodness is more than we can ever comprehend, just like his love for us is unmeasurable. Remember the gift we were given when we became parents? God gave us his greatest gift, his own son. So how much more proof do we need to know just how much he loves us? His goodness comes naturally. We work it hours daily. God made us in his own image. So we are to have that same goodness, and we are to show that same goodness to others. But God's goodness is not always easy to show because of the world we live in. But that should not be our excuse. 
because we are not to be of this world, but the life to come. God's goodness, he provides daily. <clears throat> and the Bible tells us he gives us all we need to live. His supply never runs out. His goodness is limitless. And his goodness is given freely. And do we ever feel, well, I'm a good person, so why don't more good things happen for me? Or have you ever given so you can receive? Or why does it feel like more good things happen to bad people? God gives because of who God is. God gives, and it's not because we deserve. His motivation for giving flows out because of his love for us. And we want to receive all God wants to give, but do we want the giver? Psalms 145.9 says, his goodness is for all people, even those who we think are unworthy. But who are we to say who is worthy and who isn't? Because we are all sinners. And I don't think the Ten Commandments were written in number order as worst to not so bad. But wouldn't it make us feel better if they were? Like number one, go down, number one would be the worst, go down to the list to number 10, which would be not so bad. But that person, number one, should, thou shalt not kill. <clears throat> Maybe you go down to number five, thou shalt not steal. And down to number 10, thou shalt not lie. But this person was killed because they were just hateful and evil. This person stole because they were hungry. Or well, this person lied because they didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Even if these things are done for what we feel are good reasons, a sin is a sin. And there is no number order as worse to not so bad. God's goodness comes to us in good times and bad. Even when we feel the world is falling apart around us with so much hatred and evil. I turn on the news and there's another senseless shooting. <clears throat> A family is being rescued because of flooding. A family is looking through debris that used to be their home. Another school shooting. And countries are still fighting each other. If we could just understand. But that is not for us to understand. We are to trust and know that God is in control all the time, even in those bad times. And it's hard to see and feel God's goodness when we have troubles and trials. We get so focused on our circumstances that that's all we see, and we allow them to take over. But we are not to be troubled, and we are not to be deceived, and we are not to be led astray by our circumstances that we question God's goodness. When we go through troubles and trials, I believe that is when God is teaching us, and I believe he allows these circumstances to happen so we can grow and be drawn closer to him and learn to trust just him. We can try to solve our problems by ourselves, but that will always be the wrong way. Or we can try to solve our problems from the things the world offers. That also would be the wrong way. God wants us to be safe and secure no matter what we encounter in our life. Our world is not perfect, and if it was a perfect world, would we ever need God? There is nothing perfect about our world, and there is nothing perfect about us. And we can strive daily for that perfection, but Matthew, Mark, and Luke all tell us there is only one who is perfect, and that is God. Whatever is good and, go good and perfect comes from above. Whatever is not good does not come from God. God's character will always and only be good, even when we just don't understand. God's goodness is the same yesterday, today, and in the future. God's goodness never changes, even when we do. And isn't it good to know that we serve a good and perfect God, and all he created is good? But I sure would like to have that conversation about snakes being a good creature. <laughs> and I'm sure I have some family members, Uncle John, who would like to talk about spiders and mice. And it's easy to shout how good God is 
especially when things are going good. But we ought to remember that God is good in those bad times too. Our God is loving, kind, generous, and so much more. When we accepted Christ into our life, we became a new person, or supposed to be. I wonder if he regrets giving us the privilege to think for ourselves. But I am so thankful for his unconditional love. He would never stop loving me, even when I hurt him, disappoint him, and even being disobedient. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength is my favorite scripture. Never have I quoted it more than this coming Sunday. And you have no idea just how uncomfortable I am right now. I let my fears and insecurities get the best of me. And I can't trust if I have fear. I just knew the devil would do what he does best and get inside my head and believe me, he did. But I'm standing here today only because of God's goodness. We never know what we can do until we step out and trust God. He tells us he will supply all we need. And there's no other way to say this or to add any words to make it sound any better. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. When we receive God's goodness, the gift of salvation from our Heavenly Father, we received a new life. And it is unlike any emotion we have ever felt before. He made a donation, a sacrifice to give us a second chance of life so that we may have life more abundantly. He is the source of our physical life, our spiritual life, and our heavenly destination for all eternity. And this abundant life is available to all who will hear and accept his offer of salvation. And it is our joy and our responsibility to, to share this knowledge with our friends, our family, and even our enemies. And being a good person and doing good works is not going to be enough. And if you haven't accepted Christ into your life, do it today. We hear it all the time. We are not promised tomorrow. And how true that has been these last few months. I went up to Audrey's a few days ago, and I just wanted to sit. In Mom's bedroom, she had four daily prayer books. <clears throat> and we kept Mom up to date by reading to her. And I noticed all four of her books were marked at the same dates, between May 20 and May 21. Mom died on the 23rd. Her last scripture on May 21st was John 14, 3. And I want to read, read these scriptures. But I'm going to read one through four. Let not your heart be troubled. Your trust in God, now trust in me. There are many homes up there where my father lives, and I'm going to prepare them for your coming. When everything is ready, then I will come and get you so that you can always be with me where I am. And if this weren't true, I would tell you plainly. And you know where I am going and how to get there. Mom was told on the 21st that a place is being prepared for her. And when everything is ready, he's going to come back and he's going to get her and they're going to be together always. Mom was ready and she was waiting. But we are not promised tomorrow. Christ paid our debt with his life. And now he is waiting for us to do our part. To turn around and be reconciled to him before our final judgment. We have only two choices to make, and they are ours to make freely. There is life after death, and that is with God in heaven. Or there is hell after death, and that is with the devil. Which one do you want? Which one do you choose? And you get to make this choice freely. I want to see my family again. Your choice, do you? Don't wait. We are not promised tomorrow. Give your life to God and see for yourself just how good God's goodness is.